Oh, there. Are we good to go now? I see live. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our second meeting for the Environmental Advisory Committee. Um, can I have a motion for the confirmation of the agenda, please? Shira, moved by Shira, second. Adam, I have to move my glasses, Adam, I'm a bifocal. All in favor? Yep, okay, it's carried. So if we have a disclosure of pecuniary interest, you declare it now, or if the topic comes up and you're starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable, you can declare it at that point in time. Uh, we don't have anybody that has asked to speak to the committee tonight. And the first thing on our agenda is the review of the summary report. So everyone received it. Is there any questions to the report? Not a whole lot in it because it was just our first meeting and getting our feet wet. Did you have anything to add or ask or? No? So we'll, we'll uh, move to receive it, Pam. Okay, can I have a motion to receive the report? Uh, Shira, a seconder. Valerie, all in favor? Yes, thank you, carried. Um, our first deputy presentation slash presentation is our urban forest technician and I'm going to ask Mr. Hoppy to introduce uh, Mr. Shields. So sign off here. Great, thank you, uh, Councillor Jeb. Um, so with us tonight is uh, Peter Shields. Peter is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, don't have a script in front of me so I'm probably gonna mess up your, your credentials. So I, I'm gonna let you speak to that when you introduce yourself. but. Peter, Peter is a uh, re registered forester and um, he comes to the town um, with many years experience. And again, I'll let him explain uh, his background. Um, he's, it's a relatively new role. The town historically, and, and, um, and we still do contract out a lot of forest uh, management services, uh, but a year and a half ago or so, um, as part of our budget approval for 2020, council authorized uh, the hiring of a, of a full-time staff position and Peter was the successful candidate for that role. And uh, needless to say, as our first forester, um, he's been a welcome addition, quite honestly, to have that, uh, that in-depth uh, or in-house talent has been, has been wonderful. I know council and staff alike have really benefited from his uh, his vet expertise, and uh, we're thrilled to have him on board. So uh, with, with that, um, hopefully I haven't botched uh, too much of that up, Peter, and, and maybe you can explain a little bit of your background. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, did you want me to try to share the presentation that I have? I've never tried doing this before on this, so I don't even know where to begin, to be honest. Okay, uh, Peter, I, I have your presentation if you'd like me to share it and you can just tell me next slide if that's easier. Yeah, that'll work perfect, Pam, yeah. Okay. Give me just a second and I'll bring. So first off, um, I'm not trying to correct you or anything, Bruce, but I'm, I'm an urban forester. I'm not a forester, so there's a, there is a distinction. And um, there's something that came to light earlier this year uh, with the Ontario Registered Before Professional Foresters Association where they were trying to actually change legislation um, in the Professional Foresters Act to, um, I guess, sort of have arborists only be able to manage one tree at a time. And uh, anyways, it, it's sort of before the, the Minister of uh, Natural Resources and a bunch of um, upper uh, politicians, I'll say, that, um, we're, we're sort of objecting, we being arborists are sort of objecting to that a little bit just because we are urban foresters. So I didn't want to <laughs> step on your toe there, Bruce, but um, that, that, was, that was just a, a little distinction. So um, next slide, Pam, if you don't mind. My name is Peter Shields. And so, I, yeah, I started with the town in 2019. Um, I've, um, I've acquired a few qualifications and certifications over about 25 years in this industry. Um, before this, I was, uh, I was running into a small little 
on my own just consulting practice for a couple of years. And for that, I was with the city of Markham as a supervisor of forestry, <clears throat> where I, uh, uh, we managed the EAB program. I ended up having to remove 20,000 trees and plant 20,000 trees and uh, completed an in-house tree inventory. So it was quite, a, quite an experience working for the city of Markham. And honestly, it's been a welcome change coming to the town of New Tech. I, so far, when I've been here, it's been an amazing experience. Um, to sum it all up, really, though, I have a passion for trees. And uh, I don't know, I, I call myself a bit of a tree geek. It's all I think about. It's all I do. And it's all I really talk about. So that's my sole function is just trees. Uh, next slide. So my primary duties here um, is uh, I manage the contractors. So we have pruning contractors that do the tree pruning and uh, tree removals and tree stumping. And that's Weller currently. And uh, it's sort of like a three-year tender that we put out every three years. Um, we also have uh, Drysdale's Tree Farm. They do our tree planting for us and I oversee that. Um, it's been uh, enjoyable over the since I started because I work with contractors closely. Um, I like to make sure that they do their jobs uh, well and uh, to standards and even maybe even above standards um, and properly. So um, I have a lot of hands-on work with them where I actually you can see that bottom picture. Um, I'll, I'll actually plant the tree with the entire crew to make sure that they, they do um, a fantastic job. Um, I don't accept anything less. Um, so, most of my work involves um, parts of the process of trees and pruning, removals, and stump grinding. Um, what else? Um, so service requests, and that, and that really is um, the bulk of my work at, as well as responding to residents when they call and ask about their tree. I have a tree in my front yard. I want it pruned or I want it removed or so on. So it's a lot of door-to-door uh, -door and interacting with uh, residents. Um, I tend to put out some communications. I don't know if you've received a communication on Facebook this past week. Uh, we started a, uh, um, an area street tree pruning program where we're going to be um, starting to put trees on an actual pruning cycle um, to install structure and clearances and maximize efficiencies. Next slide, please, Pam. <clears throat> So yeah, service requests are, um, they come in through our program, through uh, the, our office clerks and uh, gets registered into CityWorks. Um, I have an inbox and that inbox is getting, it gets full right, right around this time of year, um, especially and usually lasts for, right up until the fall time. So there's anywhere from I'll say five to 10 calls per day, um, which is quite a bit. It's, uh, you know, looking at CityWorks is probably one of the highest volume of calls that sort of come in um, of the highest, I'll probably say the top five. Um, and they're all tree related concerns. Um, interestingly, this picture is, um, it was a resident, she called about her tree, it's an elm tree, and she was wondering why parts of the tree were dying. And I walk up to the tree and I just dig around the base. And if anybody knows what a girdling root is, it's a root that sort of uh, literally strangles the tree. And um, it just grows like that. Unless you correct it, it'll just continue to get worse and the tree will eventually die. So um, happy to find it, corrected it, and hopefully we'll see if the tree makes it. Now, next slide. Um, I do a lot of interdepartmental assistance. So I work in the public works department and sort of with roads quite a bit. Um, and uh, engineering and development, um, we do, um, so we have what's called like a, um, an application review team meeting uh, once a week in our department. And we sort of review the development plans and site plans that come through the town. And just if there's any comments regarding, you know, water and sewers or driveways or sight lines, and I comment on the trees. And um, interestingly is our, um, bylaw or tree and vegetation management bylaw. That's the current policy or slash bylaw that I apply to all um, development applications for tree compensation and, um, and so on. <clears throat> but I work with uh, parks and um, quite a bit with bylaw actually. Um, that's this picture here at the bottom here, there's a neighboring dispute and I sort of go in and just provide my objective comments on trees. So the bylaw officer can make their decision about how to resolve the next uh, 
problem. Next slide, please. So our application review team, I, I think I just touched on this. I went a little ahead, but um, that's just it. I just comment on uh, trees. So, I mean, if there's a too many of one species, for example, that a developer is proposing to plant, then I try to help um, increase the diversity um, and make those suggestions. Um, as you know, like we've lost all our ash trees um, in the town and we're all really across Ontario and the States. And, um, we have to diversify our populations more. And um, so I, I really catch a lot of these things and I really pay attention to them. Actually, I watched a video, a seminar just last week about diversity and it just really strengthened my um, understanding and appreciation for the importance of diversity um, in our tree populations and plant populations and how it attracts um, sort of beneficial insects. Um, so we don't have insect problems as much. Um, something as simple as paper wasps and uh, those bald-faced hornets that nobody likes, um, they actually feed on those uh, insects that do a lot of damage. So some of these things we need to really start thinking about holistically. And um, yeah, and, and I apply the tree policy, the, so the tree and vegetation management policy, and I'm just working on trying to um, revise it slightly. There's been some um, always questions, I guess, coming from um, the engineering development departments just about tree compensation. So I, I'm working on just clarifying, a, um, I guess, an easier formula and to um, work on that policy just slightly to make it more readable, I guess. Um, I think that's really it. In a nutshell, my overview of what I do, um, and I'm happy to be here. Next slide. Um, Oh, yeah, one last thing um, that I started to doing, and especially in, it was as a result of reviewing the policy, is um, I'm working on establishing, or I guess um, identifying what our actual tree canopy is for the town, um, and mostly in our developed areas. So I, I started getting like tentatively, we're at about 25% uh, tree canopy cover in our developed areas. Um, I, I need to work a lot more on it just to get a more refined number, but so don't take that to the bank, but it was nice to actually figure out that, wow, okay, we're at around this mark. And it's something to sort of work toward because the previous policy had a range of a tree canopy of 30 to 40%, which was, uh, let's just say it's, it's a very wide ranging goal to reach. Um, so we can actually work towards being more specific with something like that. And um, anyways, I, I do that through an iTree, uh, it's called iTree, it's a web-based uh, computer program um, and I'm going to continue working on that to refine it throughout this year um, as time is available. Um, it helps with species composition and uh, identifying how trees grow and the benefits and the actual value of our urban forest. We can actually put a dollar figure on exactly what their forest is worth, which is uh, pretty unique and pretty neat. Next slide. That's it <laughs> in a nutshell. So if anybody has any questions, I don't know if we want to do questions or anything. I'm open. Has anybody it. got any questions? Helen. Thank you, Councillor Jeb. And thank you, Peter, that excellent presentation. Um, I had a chance to read through the New Town New Tecumseh official plan in the last couple of days. Um, and I know there's some, some sections on tree preservation and tree planting. So, and I was happy to hear you mention about tree cover because I think it says in the official plan about um, the town should be planned to achieve a tree cover of 30%. So I'm not sure if that has changed. Um, and I was interested in uh, you mentioning about the, the eye tree canopy. I, I'm retired from York Region Public Health, but I worked with York Region Forestry and I know they use that model and I, I think it's excellent to show the benefits of trees in terms of benefits to air quality because that's we're able to translate that into benefits for human health. So I'm happy to see that too. Um, I wanted to ask though um, about the, and again, this is in the official plan and it's um, the, the way it's worded, it's suggesting that the town consider um, a tree bylaw. So not, I know you talked about the bylaw, but a, a tree cutting bylaw. So I know some municipalities have that. I wonder if that's something that you might be investigating as well. 
Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I am actually um, through this whole process, especially reviewing our tree and vegetation management policy. Um, I'm, I'm working to develop our, our town tree bylaw. Um, you're right, many municipalities have it and it just regards uh, town trees and it sort of points to consequences for issues and uh, um, you know contraventions of it because really right now the our bylaw department does not have any um, teeth so to speak with any kind of contravention for a town tree issue. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely something that I've uh, drafted, and um, you know we're we're just in this preliminary stage right now. But yeah, I'm, I'm I want to put that uh, forward to my manager and directors, and, and up to to Bruce, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Sorry. Any other questions? I I've got a question, uh, Peter, about the ash trees. Um, have we on the rural roads, have we, do you go out to the rural roads to check for the ash trees along the rural roads and what kind of shape are we in with them? Um, the, the rural roads, the ash trees are just about all dead. Um, <laughs> we, we've been working on them, um, since I started, you know, I, I try to get the rural roads mostly in the winter time, um, just because it, 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 it's, uh, it, you know, I don't want to, one, I don't want to be do a lot of pruning in the winter and uh, ash trees are easy to identify. They're on the roadside. It's, it's pretty simple. Let's just remove them. Um, all, all the ash trees in the urban areas are just about all gone. So all I truly have left, I just say, I, the town we have left are the ones in the rural road. So side road 10 is 99% complete. Um, seventh line we're working on. <coughs> excuse me, seventh line we're working on. Um, I'm trying to focus on some sections where um, it's maybe more traffic and um, possibly like there's one section on the seventh line just east of the 15th where there's some really large ash trees on the front of people's lawns. So I'm, I'm trying to focus on those kinds of areas first. Um, in terms of, are you maybe looking for a timeline um, Councillor Jeb, like as to when we're going to be completing it or numbers or? No, no, I'm not looking for a timeline. It's just, I was wondering, um, well, would we be considering about replacing them with another ash tree or any other specific species that you think might survive better? No, so ash trees are done. Um, let's, let's wipe them from our, uh, <laughs> our inventory. They're, they're never going to make a comeback. Um, they're all but done. It's bad because they're a very tough tree. They're, uh, a native tree. They grew quite well. Um, they're a very, uh, you know, they're a sought after urban tree. So, but really what I'm doing is I'm replanting all our ash trees with, I don't know, 20 different species of new trees. So, you know, like if there was, a thousand ash trees in our urban areas there there's going to be a whole slew of new trees that are being planted there on our rural spots i'm definitely going to be replanting um where there's the opportunity to um I, you know like a lot of these ash trees are sort of nat naturally grown and i guess what you'd call volunteer seeded they just sort of yeah. grew in um but yeah I'm, I'm definitely going to be replanting a lot of these spots especially in front of people's houses and stuff for sure okay. yeah uh, Councillor Harrison McIntyre had her card up. Thanks, um, Donna. Um, a couple committees that I sit on are talking about starting to plant new species that normally or in the past you haven't seen up in this area because of um, global warming. So um, last year, the South Simcoe Streams Network planted uh, sycamore trees. And um, I'm trying to think, yeah, um, also Lake Simcoe planted those. So are there any trees that you're introducing to the area that are part of the Carolinian forest, but now can grow up here as part of our inventory in terms of diversification? Yeah, uh, tulip tree. Um, tulip trees are one of the main trees that have been planting last year and this year. Uh, awesome. Cucumber magnolia, I'm planting in some parks. 
Um, I haven't done any sycamore. The only reason I haven't done sycamore is I haven't had success with it in the past. I have planted them, but I, it, when I was in Markham, I planted 50 of them and all 50 of them died. Mm. So it just, Good to you. <laughs> yeah. And I love those trees, but I am planting London plane trees, which are, you know, it's sort of like a hybridized version of the sycamore, even though a sycamore maple is, um, well, it's a different genus, but I mean, the London plane, they look very similar. They have that camouflage bark kind of thing on them and um, but yeah no I, I'm planting a whole slew of whatever I can um, what else did I plant a bitternut hickory up in uh, Buchanan Park um, Talpa? yeah pardon me Catalpa I haven't done Catalpa yet I, I did that in Markham um, I would do that in parks yeah beautiful trees they got gorgeous flowers on them and the great yeah. pollinators yeah okay um is there any, it would be, I would like to see us, I mean, maybe this is to, totally different, we'll bring this to council, but I would love to see an arboretum in our area. Take one of our small parks and, or just one of our parks and turn it into a, a tree park. Yeah, that would be a great idea. Yeah. So, um, the idea. so I mean, <laughs> it's, it's that actual process of designation. Um, but I mean, I, there's some parks and I'll, and I'll just use the example of Northwood Park in Beaton. Um, we're gonna be doing a planting this, this spring and I'm planting every variety of tree that we have um, into that park. Same thing with Buchanan Park I did. There wasn't a tree in that park in last fall. So I planted, I think there's 25 different trees in there now. Um, so yeah, if there's, I love the idea. Okay, great. I like that idea too. Uh, Stephanie, you had your card up. Yes, and thank you for the presentation. Um, um, and I'm not sure if this is where I should bring this up, but um, having seen uh, you know, a webinar that our committee, I think was, was asked to, to look at about nature-based climate solutions, um, I was just wondering if that kind of lens has made it into or will make it into any of the policies. I mean, obviously planting trees has so many benefits for a lot of reasons, but um, just if that if that language or framework is has come into the the, the view of the or will be in the, the policy that are being written, and I just have a question as well about um, did you say the twenty five percent canopy is what we currently have or what we will strive to have? I wasn't clear on that. That's all. No, nope, that's what we currently have, and that's through the all the developed areas. Right. So yeah, I I don't want you to take that number to the bank. Um, I did do Beaton. Beaton, for example, was almost 40%. Hmm. Um, but Alliston, because of the development and just the way the ortho photograph worked, you know, that all of treetops was still bare sand by the time I was able to capture um, what, what was there on the ground. So, I mean, they're only going to happen every five to 10 years whenever there's a new ortho photograph sort of updated into Google. That's sort of when I can do um, new updates to the canopy assessment. Um, so it's a baseline. When was treetops built? So, you know, if it was like six years ago or seven years ago, for example, you know, like that 25% represents a point in time five years ago or six years ago. So we just have to sort of gauge that and, and realize that it's not a hard and fast number, but it's something as a guideline that maybe we can go by. Um, and I've also, with the iTree, I've, I've sort of broken it up into wards, um, into developed wards. So like ward one, for example, has a higher canopy cover than uh, just say ward four, I think ward four, because of treetops and it didn't have any kind of canopy cover or herbaceous cover at all when I did the assessment. So just as an example, but I think it'll be a great sort of tool for us to sort of go by. Um, to your other part about um, is there language in our policy about the environment and um, there is I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag kind of thing but um, that's exactly what I want to do is um, it, it I'll just say like the, the beginning of the wording of the of the policy statement is we are committed to mitigating and adapting to the effects of a changing climate and that's ultimately what I feel we should be doing is we have to adapt and mitigate all the research that I've read, all the seminars that I have attended, um, uses those two words very strongly, adapting and mitigating. 
Um, so I agree and I, and I think they're very important words. Um, and part of what I know doing this I tree study, for example, is trees near our streets are critical. You know, they, they're the ones that are covering the asphalt, um, the black asphalt, the, you know, that absorbs all that heat and creates that heat, um, that urban island effect. Um, so that's what I really want to try to focus on is really increasing our, um, our canopy cover along our streets. And it's not only increasing, but it's protecting. Um, how can we protect our trees to make sure that they're not being lost for silly reasons? Um, so that's a big component of this policy is the protection part too. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah. Adam. Hi, Peter. Thanks for uh, coming to chat with us. And just uh, more of a curiosity question for me. I'm just sort of wondering uh, what kind of criteria you're looking at when you're deciding what type of tree is going to go where, whether it's going to be on a roadside, and I mean, you mentioned canopy, um, or in a park environment. Really? Um, that's a great question, Adam, because I mean, I, I contemplate this all the time, and, and sometimes I have to put less thought in it than I could, because I... I'm just still figuring out the whole process here about ordering our trees and then putting them in the spots. Um, I'm finding that I'm not, I don't have so much to do where I can't plan properly. So this year will be a very telling year because it's the first spring that I've been here, whereas something hasn't happened. I remember last year, we didn't even get a chance to plant any trees. Um, so I played catch up over the fall, which um, was kind of, um, I, I did a lot of planting in parks. Um, but when I go to a street where there's a tree spot, I'll just say a vacant site, what I call it, a tree came out, we grinded the stump out, and now we're planning for the new tree. Um, what usually came out was an ash or a Norway maple. And um, I'm replanting with, um, you know, a slew, I'll just say a slew of 25 or 30 different species of trees. Um, tulip tree is of my favorite. Um, I'm, we're, we're planting a hybridized elm tree. Uh, oaks, uh, bur oak, of course, and swamp white oak and red oak. And um, yeah, I, I can't think of the other ones offhand, but I'm trying to reduce the numbers of maples. Um, if you remember, there was the Asian longhorn beetle down in the Woodbridge area back in 2004. Um, I was on that original beetle brigade where we actually wiped out 15,000 trees in Woodbridge alone. We were walking in people's backyards and cutting the trees out because CFIA comes in and says, every maple is coming out of this quarantine area. That's it, and nobody has a choice on it. Uh, that's how serious a pest it is. If, um, and I'm not fear mongering, but if that pest ever got up to here, um, we're gonna lose 50% of our canopy because that's what maples sort of represent right now is, is at least 50%. And um, I mean, you were losing all the willows and birch trees and whatever other host tree, the Asian longhorn beetle attacks. But so that diversity is our strength. So um, Adam, like a, a, uh, I, I, I consider like the best job in the world. I get to pick trees and I get to plant trees. And um, honestly, I knock on just about everybody's door to have a discussion. I sort of say, do you want this tree? And I try to give them a bit of a selection or I'll I'll talk them into getting a certain tree a little bit because everybody wants a red maple. Um, that's all they really know, I think. So then they, when I say red maple, that usually means a crimson king maple. Yeah. Um, that's the tree that they know. That's the tree they want. Um, sometimes I do, but I, I try to talk them out of it a little bit. And um, But I, sometimes I plant it. And sometimes I don't get to talk to the person. I plant a tree and I have to remove it because they insist they do not want a tree in front of their house. And uh, so those ones suck, but um, I really try to knock everybody's door and have a conversation with them. We, I can we, share uh, that we plant as well. I'm, I'm happy to do so. We had the trees along the side road that were all dead and removed. So we planted, I wanted red, no, I wanted orange and yellow maples. I planted them six they all died and Doug Drysdale informed me those were sugar maples sugar maples do not belong on the side of the road well thanks for sharing after the fact so. <laughs> we replaced you know, I, them all I've, again <laughs> yeah now, 
That you know, Longhorn, is it still around? Is it, or ha, is it kind of got it under, so, have we got it under control? Yeah, like in 2014, they declared it eradicated um, from Toronto and Woodbridge. And um, then in 2015, they found it again. Oh. So they have to go through a period of five years before they declared it eradicated. Um, I don't think that they ever should, um, just because I think we should always be on guard for it, because it can come in through uh, moving firewood, through shipping containers. It's down in the States still. <clears throat> um, in parts of New York, they have extensive surveys. They have arborists literally climbing trees just to look for this insect, believe it or not. It's a, it's, it's a very, very serious pest. Um, but they haven't found it here as far as I know for since 2014. So, you know, knock on wood, that um, prey doesn't get up here. Hey, is there any other questions for Peter? Helen. Uh, thank you. I have two, and I, um, but when you're talking about pests, it made me think of gypsy moth and you haven't mentioned that one yet. So I have to throw in another one. Um, last year was a, a bad year. I live um, just uh, south of Tottenham. So it was a bad year for the forest around our place and the trees on our property. And I suspect it's going to be another bad year because they laid uh, lots of uh, nests and eggs in the tree. Um, but my other question was about, um, so when um, Stephanie mentioned uh, the nature-based solutions, I taught a, a class this afternoon to public health professionals on the importance of nature, talked about nature-based solutions a lot. So um, I was wondering, um, as, as part of your job, do you also look at other than trees, so vegetative cover, like maybe low shrubs and, and how that maybe low impact development, how the work you're doing can contribute to uh, low impact development and through other vegetation? I, uh, I really love the way you think. Um, yeah, the low impact development to start is, um, I was sort of only introduced to it um, back when I was in Markham, uh, we visited a few spots in Mississauga through the in Credit Valley Conservation Area um, where they have some of these low impact development spots. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, there's some challenges with it, um, you know, maintenance challenges and, and so on. Um, but I, it might be more of an engineering discussion with engineering and development because they're the ones that would have to try to I guess do the research on it. I mean, I'm all for more trees, more plants, more trees. Um, let's let the ground absorb water. Let's, you know, let's let nature help out as much as we can if we plan it properly. Um, but it, I think you might know, like it, it's a tough battle sometimes with um, some of those departments and developers, you know, because they still have to build and they still have to create infrastructure <clears throat> properly. Um, so I, I, I am in favor of it. I, I, I would say that I don't know enough about it to really push it, but I would certainly love to be able to comment more on it and see if it's something of interest. Um, in terms of, the, as far as a gypsy moth, uh, yeah, it, it's bad. It's gonna get bad this year. Um, I mean, I, I put out a, a Facebook post, I think last fall, just about what we can do to help, you know, um, and I'm probably going to do that again this spring, something like hanging up burlap and then the people want to squish the insects as one control method. I know a lot of people get all squeamish with that kind of stuff, um, scraping off the egg masses and put them in the, you know, just into a plastic bag and getting rid of the eggs. Um, those little cultural practices help out tremendously, but there might only be a handful of people that are truly interested in doing that. <laughs> Maybe we should have a gypsy moth brigade going around and I don't know, um, but it's, it's very much cyclical, the gypsy moth. Uh, populations rise and they'll get to a point where they'll break again. Uh, it's usually every seven years or so. So it's gonna go up again, I think this year. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's all we can really do. I'll put out a few posts on Facebook through the town and um, remind people, but I don't know, there's not much else that we can do. I don't think anyways. Thanks. Is there any other questions for Peter? No, okay, well, thank you very much, Peter. Um, Bruce, did you have anything else to add? 
No, I just uh, wanted to, to echo the chair's comment, Peter. That was uh, that was good. I always enjoy listening to your your passion and and uh, your your your, ed your education. Um, you know, it's it's always uh, nice to hear you talk. So th thanks for taking time out of your evening. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Do you want me to go now? Well, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> okay no if you don't if you don't need me or anything i no you're you're welcome to stay peter but you're welcome to leave too oh okay well <laughs> i'll stay and listen you to the desk. <laughs> yeah sure i'll stay and listen okay thank you're, you you're, you're allowed to pour a glass of wine now peter <laughs> just oh, yeah well. put your camera off so we don't see that <laughs> God, oh, that's why bruce's camera was off i got that's it. right yeah my secret's out I had to put mine <laughs> off because of my internet. I have to down, try not to do as much as I can so I can hear what's going on. Um, so the next thing, so we'll, we'll have a motion to receive Peter's presentation. Stephanie and Helen, thank you. All in favor? You'll find if nobody puts their hand up, I'll suggest to somebody to make the motion. <laughs> Scott's sitting pretty quiet. He's next one on the list. <laughs> uh, the next is the correspondence and information, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit, uh, the community action. So um, there was some great reading in that. Helen, Helen, where'd you go? There you are. Helen, did you provide that to us? Yes, yeah, I sent it to Pam and she shared it with the group. So yep. um, what she shared was the, um, some of the actions that the health unit um, was, had included actions that municipalities can take. So that's what I thought might be of interest to the group and also of interest to Peter because um, there's lots of uh, suggestions in there for things like green spaces, planting trees, community gardens, things that can help um, address, adapt to climate change and mitigate climate change. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything in particular that you'd like to pull out of the report that you'd like to talk about or maybe suggest that we forward on to council? Is there anything? Well, there, um, I did um, ask if someone from the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit could speak at our next um, meeting and um, the climate change project coordinator with the health unit said that she is quite happy to come to our main meeting and do a, oh, a very brief Deputation, if that yeah. would be welcome. To the committee. Yeah, that would be great. Is there anything else? Like, does anybody else have anything to say out of the report that we read? Is there anything that caught your eye? Not seeing anybody. Um, when I read it, I, I happened to come across an article out of um, a John Deere magazine go figure. And it's about tomorrow's corn. And it's talking about plants turning CO2, water and sunlight into oxygen, and how they found that some plants like soybeans, rice, canola and trees can do it better than corn and sorghum. So it was kind of an interesting little article. And they're doing research and how they can help the plants make a hybrid plant to 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 change it better. So I copied it and I sent it to Pam. So I'll get her to send it on to everybody. I just found that little interesting fact. So, um, Shira, did you want to make a suggestion about, oh, go ahead, Helen. Sorry, sorry. I was just gonna mention when you asked if there's anything particular, um, the Medical Officer of Health has given quite a few presentations about the, their climate change and health vulnerability assessment. And one thing that he always presents, talks about, is that the climate that we're gonna experience in New Tecumseh and Simcoe County in the next 30 to 50 years. And it's gonna be similar to the climate in Kentucky. So when we think about the trees that are being planted today, we have to think about trees that will be able to withstand that climate, that's, that, um, is it that the climate that's be, being experienced today in Kentucky. So it's gonna look quite a bit different. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, an interesting read when you think about the health impacts of, on climate change, but there's lots we can do to help adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any, Shira, did you want to make a suggestion about um, an arboretum in one of the parks? 
Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll let you do the wording and I'll just <laughs> care. The, you do the work. Okay. Well, Pam and I will say um, after the presentation of um, the arborist, urban arborist, um, that the committee would suggest to council that one of the parks become more of an arboretum. Does that sound right? Is that, is that close? I mean, that sounds fine with me. I don't know if we have to take an existing park or create a new park or just suggest that the town look at um, creating Making. an arboretum. I think yep. there is one in Alliston right beside the train tracks, but it's tiny. Um, and I know that there's one in, in Aurora beside their community center, which is a huge walking trail with um, all sorts of trees there. Um, yep. Yeah, so I'd like to see that created. A park, we won't say current or future, just say a park. How's yeah. that? Then, does, that yeah. is, does that make sense, Pam? I was gonna ask Peter if that makes sense actually. If he has a comment for that, or if see you hung if, around for a reason, Peter. Yeah, or if there is a park that or an area that maybe the committee has in mind, or Peter, what, what would you suggest on how to um, move forward with investigating the proper space for an arboretum? Um, one of the arboretums that come to mind is the one in Barry. Is anybody familiar with it? It's off of um, Spring. Is it Tiffin? No. Sunnydale Park. Sunnydale Park. Sunnydale Park. Yep. That's it. Yep. Yep. There's a there's a section there that's an arboretum, and that might um, be a possibility too. You know, like it may not need necessarily be an entire park. It could be a section of a park. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know, and I, I I love the idea, but maybe you can have sections of a park in each town. You know, like in Tottenham, Beaton, and Alliston too. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's not difficult to do. I mean, I mean, planting the different varieties of trees is easy. Um, it's just, you know, getting a little name tag or a little plaque, you know, of some kind and um, keeping it simple. Um, but Hillcrest Park, for example, I planted 100 trees up there last year and uh, had no trees in it before. And um, it's beautiful. Like it, it's, I, I just wrap the trees around the perimeter of this entire park and it's sort of like a walking, you can just walk and check out the name of every single tree because the tags are still on it. But oh. me being a tree geek, right? Like and <laughs> <laughs> just liking that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I think more ideas are to find out what park might suit it, but certainly parts of a park would work. Yeah. Um, Valerie, you had something. Yeah, just on that note, I know that when treetops uh, was initially proposed and they began development, there was talks of, um, I don't know if it was like a trail, like 25 kilometer walking trail or something. They had a huge thing about it, but I'm wondering if that could be integrated over there because I know that it's pretty, pretty barren right now. Might be a good spot, just as a suggestion. Bruce. Bruce. Can you answer that? Because I know we were supposed to have like an off-leash park and up in, up on the hill part to the east, I think they're keeping trees there. Yeah, so, th so th there actually is a, a natural woodlot that uh, as part of the next phase um, is going to be dedicated to the, to the town. And I know through um, a couple of different departments, engineering, as well as uh, with Peter's input in our parks and rec department, there is a, a forest management plan that is being uh, proposed for that area. So um, yeah, there, there, is a, there is a walking trail that, that will be established as, as part of the next phase. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. Um, Stephanie, I knew there was somebody else. Thank you. Um, I think, I guess all around the whole discussion is I, I referred back to the strategic plan um, because I know that that's a, like, you know, protecting natural areas from overdevelopment and overuse and increasing, uh, sorry, um, developing mechanisms to increase the urban forest on town lands, public open spaces and private lands is actually written in the strategic plan. So um, I guess 
you know, we can finish with the motion, but is it, is it, is it useful to um, reference the strategic plan on that motion as well? And then um, afterwards, I was just wondering more specifically, like how that, how those things are done, especially on private lands, but that's separate. Like for the motion, I was just wondering if we should reference the strategic plan. Shira, do you want to put, put a reference into the strategic, referring to the stri strategic plan into the motion? For sure, as per the strategic plan and whatever Stephanie said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you got that, Pam? Yeah. She's off the camera there. There she is. Because I'm busy typing. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can watch it tight. That's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't have all. I uh, it'll be something like and whereas the strategic plan references. Sorry, was it the increase of tree canopy part, um, Stephanie? Yeah. So I guess like there's actually for me there's two parts of the the environmental sustainability pillar in the strategic plan that are kind of referencing trees, but I think the more relevant one is the third, which is increase the use of, oops, sorry, develop mechanisms to increase the urban forest on town lands, public open spaces and private lands. Right, so it'll be, okay, so I'll reference that part and it'll be whereas the uh, strategic plan references that and whereas, um, the committee recommends that staff investigate available options for creating arboretum areas in each community of the town and further that a report be brought uh, to council for consideration. Um, and I'm not sure if we have to include a line where it would be it could be considered at budget deliberations if this is something that would um, have to be planned for as a as a project. Maybe Bruce or Peter could speak to that. You, you took the words out of my mouth, so I was going to suggest that's. I, I would recommend uh, through the chair, if if that's appropriate, that um, I, I don't think there's a major major dollars we're talking about, and there already is a budget. But I, I think um, I think to tie it to budget deliberations is prudent. Okay, so I can include that. Oh, shoot, Donna's on you. Sorry, I'm off. <laughs> Helen, go ahead. Thank you. So it was a question to um, Bruce or Peter. Maybe this, is, this happens automatically, but um, there's lots of federal funding programs now to plant trees. So would you need to put that in the, the motion to that staff investigate funding programs? Um, so I know the $3 billion, $3 billion tree um, program, maybe this might apply or might um, fit that criteria? Was, is that something automatic the town would do or do you need to put that in the motion? Normally the staff are looking for grants, but I'll let Pete Bruce speak to that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Helen to answer your question. I don't think it's necessary in the motion. That is normally, we, we, we always uh, try and pursue any funding opportunities. Okay, so Pam, you're good with that motion? Yeah, I'll make sure all, everything is captured and I'll, I'll uh, tidy it up a little bit, definitely. Okay. And I can... So it was moved by Shira and seconded by Scott. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> all in favor. Okay, you're next, Adam. <laughs> So the next thing on the agenda, um, yes, I'm still on, on mute, um, unfinished business, which we didn't really have. Uh, under new business, if you want draft committee work plan ideas. So if, if you come up with some ideas that maybe that we could suggest to council that could be done, that we could maybe put them onto the agenda for the next meeting and we can have a discussion about it. And then also Helen is going to have someone from the health unit to speak to us too. Okay, is there anything else anybody could think of? 
I'm doing a quick buzz around there. Nope, we're good. So a little bit of homework for everybody to think of what you would like to do for work plans for us and suggestions. And I will have a motion to adjourn. Adam. <laughs> and second by Valerie. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, we adjourned at 8.21 PM. Okay. Perfect, so it was an hour. Way to go. Thank you for coming, Peter. We really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you for having me anytime. Okay. Fine. Have a good evening.